Well, joining us now to help uh, sort all of this out, Washington Free Beacon reporter Lachlan Markey, and with us, author, columnist, Fox News contributor, Jedediah Vila. Good to have you all here. Uh, here. First, Jedediah, your reaction to Trump's, uh, I, I guess it was a, if it's a veil threat or at least yeah. an ambiguous statement on his part. I mean, it's surprising. I have a problem with anyone who doesn't take the opportunity to make his or her case to the American people. I think it's great that he's in first place. I think he's done a lot of things right. But right now is a time where anyone could rise up. You've seen Ted Cruz tighten that race. You see establishment people looking at Marco Rubio. I think to say, I'm not going to do this debate is basically saying, well, I don't have to. And it comes off kind of cocky, a little bit elitist, and like he doesn't need this opportunity to make Whoa, his case to people. But you just said Donald Trump comes across cocky? <laughs> yeah, Lachlan, I did. You, you, you don't see that there, do you? I mean, I thought it was interesting that the excuse he gave, you know, he went back to this feud that he had had uh, towards the beginning with Megyn Kelly. I think if he thinks he doesn't need to do this debate, he should just say he doesn't need to do it. Certainly nothing he said so far has hurt him. Uh, but, you know, maybe he thinks he's just going to coast it out through New Hampshire. All the numbers are looking good for him. He doesn't need the debate. But, uh, you know, I think to revive this feud with Fox is uh, just pointless and, you know, it's not going to help him. I don't think it'll hurt him too much, but, you know, it's just unbecoming of a presidential candidate. Agreed. Yeah, this is, it's sort of interesting because he's defied at every step conventional wisdom, uh, if you will, uh, analytics that would suggest he's making a mistake. Uh, it, it is difficult at uh, some point to say, you know, here's another rash judgment by a man who's overstepping. He's done it for seven months and remains the front runner. Jedediah, your thoughts? I just don't know why you would use an opportunity to make yourself look small. This is a guy who's been wildly successful. When you look at him, you see someone who can conquer big issues, and you like him because you think he can take people on, that he's fearless, that he's not afraid of things. And he keeps bringing up Megyn Kelly. She's a strong woman. She's a confident woman. She asks good questions. But if you're afraid of Megyn Kelly, and that's the reason mm -hmm. you keep bringing up, that's a problem for voters. And if you don't think that it's a great opportunity to once again make your case to people, then you're kind of laughing at the system. This is a chance for these candidates to get up there and remind people why they are the number one choice. So I think Donald and all the other candidates should be grateful for that opportunity and get out there and tell us what you want to do with this you know, country. Lachlan, there, there's, some, there's some possibility here, that just as Senator Ted Cruz is acknowledging the possibility of the unstoppability of the Trump campaign that, and I, I'm not a, you know, I can't see uh, into the future any better than anyone else. But there is the possibility within all of this that he would accomplish against his own interests what the National Review, the Business Roundtable, and the Chamber of Commerce could not do, uh, and that is create a problem for his campaign. I mean, what it really comes down to is the first two primaries. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously he's looking good in both of them. So, you know, he doesn't see any reason to sort of upset the apple cart. Uh, but, you know, you, when you start getting into the, the nitty gritty of uh, retail style politics, you know, you look at the structure of the Iowa caucuses, for instance, and it requires a pretty tremendous ground game that no one is really sure if Donald Trump yeah. has at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and the delegate recruiting process is very rigorous. It's a very convoluted process. And we actually yeah. saw Ron Paul get three times as many delegates as Mitt Romney, despite actually winning less of the popular vote there. So he'll get a vote of confidence if he well, comes out on top in terms of a vote a little percentage, bit but that's not nobody the whole thing. Seems to have any assessment as to whether or not he has a ground game or he doesn't. I would prefer right. something yeah. far more than conjecture on the part of the national media now, left, right, middle, whatever you want to call it. Why isn't there an empirical statement as to what kind of ground game each of these candidates has? Mm -hmm. It seems to me that there's a little bit of, if you will, a helicopter journalism going on uh, in the sense that we don't really have that, that number in front of us. Well, I think a lot of campaigns like to play up the strength of their ground game. Oh, when I'm not worried about the, the campaigns. Numbers. I'm worried about what are the job you and I and Jedi <laughs> and everybody else. Well, well, you know, maybe there's not much reporting because there's not much to report on. I don't know. Well, then in that case, everybody's in trouble because there's not much of a ground game for anyone. <laughs> Lachlan Markey, uh, Jedi Abila, and I'm just being told uh, that uh, Donald Trump's campaign manager has said Donald Trump, quote, will not be at. Uh, this Thursday's uh, Fox News hosted GOP presidential debate. That's the latest word we have, and we, of course, will keep you up to date as soon as we learn anything more. Be sure to vote in tonight's poll. The question is, do you believe Republican governors and other elected officials are afraid to endorse Donald Trump? Cast your vote on Twitter at Lou Dobbs News. Follow me on Twitter at Lou Dobbs News. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram at Lou Dobbs Tonight. Links to everything found 
at LouDobbs.com. An Ohio sheriff's deputy is lucky to be alive tonight. Captain Brad Moore was directing traffic. There was a minor accident when a semi-truck was pinned by a, by a railroad track arm. An oncoming train then slammed into the truck, sending it straight towards Officer Moore. The deputy sheriff, uh, well, his only injuries were a broken hand, a gash to the head, and the, uh, the deputy hopes to return to work next week. I mean, these close calls are, this is incredible stuff. And what a fortunate man he is. Up next, a few thoughts on, well, the mainstream media uh, that's seemingly out of touch with regular Americans and can't